What's going on guys? Today I'm going to talk to you about hinge specific exercises and I'm going to demonstrate a deadlift for you, how I introduce it to my clients and how you can learn it too. Let's jump into it. First of all, a deadlift is a hinge specific movement, which means that it's going to incorporate most of the muscles down your posterior chain. A deadlift is world renowned as one of the most effective strength exercises to work every muscle in the body. Now, of course, there's going to be other muscles that might not get as worked might not get worked as much as others, but compared to something like a squat, a bench press, and definitely a bicep curl, a deadlift's gonna involve a lot more muscle groups than you may think. Running down your posterior chain, which is pretty much the group of muscles you have all the way from the back of your neck to your ankles, the deadlift's mainly gonna be placing emphasis on your hamstrings, your lower back, and your core, depending on what kind of deadlifts you're doing. Today, we're gonna to run through body weight introduction into the lift exercise and then some different progressions from that point forward. When someone approaches me for the first time, I literally introduce them with a bodyweight deadlift or a bodyweight hinge to see if they have that movement pattern accessible with their hips. I'll get them to stand in front of an object, normally around knee height, a box is best, but we're gonna use a bench for today. Place your hands, palms of your hands on your thighs and literally just hinge down till your wrists pass your knees and stand straight back up. Okay, if I just pause myself right here, I can explain the situation a little bit better. Okay, so what we're ideally looking for is a neutral curve in the spine. Okay, that means that if you are standing tall, your spine would have a natural curvature to it, and we want that natural curvature to maintain the entire way through the deadlift. So nothing should be changing with the back position. You can see that my shoulders are pulled back and my lats are set down. A lot of people explain this in the way of tucking your shoulder blades into your back pocket. And this, all this means is that you're lengthening the distance between your ears and your shoulders, and you're pushing your shoulders down, not to let them flare up or not to let your shoulder blades drift away from you during the movement. My low back is fine and it's completely flat. My feet are flat on the floor, and I've got a vertical shin straight down from the top of my knee to the top of my ankle, okay? And this is specifically important to engage those hamstrings. If you start to bend those knees and let them come forward, you'll start to lose the tension in the back of your legs, okay? So we want those knees to be pushed back far enough so we, one, feel it in the hamstrings, feel the tension in the hamstrings, and two, can engage them properly so we can use them to drive up when lifting whatever it is that we're lifting off the ground, okay? And then the last thing I wanna show you guys is that my shoulder is directly above my wrist. So that shoulder, elbow, and wrist are all forming a straight line down, which is also important, because as you know, if you pick anything up that's far in front of you, um, it's very difficult to do so with a straight and neutral spine, okay? If I was literally standing here, going to pick something up in front of me, you can see how much my back bends, as opposed to when I stand straight and hinge down with it much closer to me. Okay, so there are a few of the points that we're considering when we're crossing over into this kind of body weight hinge movement. Okay, the next few points I wanna discuss are how we can progress this to eventually lifting a straight barbell in the gym, okay? With the pace that I have right now, I'm not gonna be able to show you a deadlift with a barbell, but I will show you how I can progress that in a traditional home setup. Okay, so I would literally start the movement prep with a band. A red band like this is gonna be absolutely fine. It just needs to form an entire loop. I know you can get resistance bands that are kind of one side and have handles both sides. In my opinion, these are a lot better and a lot more versatile because they have the ability to loop around things that you wouldn't have on the other ones. All that we're gonna do is step into one side of the band. I'm gonna step into the other side so I'm gonna step over the other side, okay? And then I'm gonna loop the original side that I was holding around my foot again, okay? So we've gone around the foot, over, we step on the band with the other foot, and then we just looped it around the same foot as we started with, okay? So it gives you this sort of setup with the band, all right? All I'm gonna do, let's just wait for that plane to pass over the top. All I'm gonna start with is literally grabbing two parts of the band and lifting that up like I would a normal deadlift. 
Just be aware that your first hinge is going to be on the way down and you should kind of treat this like it's your first rep. So don't bend over, get into position and then try and maintain that neutral lumbar spine that we talked about. Make sure it's steady from the top. Before you go, breathe in, brace your core, tuck your ribs down and pull your shoulders back into your back pockets. Keeping your hands firmly on your thighs, you're gonna hinge over, grab two parts of the band, stand up tall, squeeze your bum at the top, make sure the shoulders are pulled back and down. You don't want too much tension in your shoulders hugging up like this. You want to push that chest out and bring those shoulders back. Hinging down, wrist below the knee is the point that we're getting to, and then driving up. Wrist below the knee, feet stay flat, vertical shin, and we're maintaining a strong grip on that band the entire time. If I just pause myself here, I can come around and explain this in a little bit more detail. Okay, so a few points we've got going on here are the difference between the body weight exercise and the banded exercise is gonna be a lot of tension at the top when the band is at full stretch. Depending on how experienced you are with this one, I would recommend either going for one or two lengths of the band. Any more than that, you just start to kind of hurt your feet, to be honest with you, as it starts to pull underneath your shoes and it starts to get quite uncomfortable. Um, I've gone for two right now, so there's gonna be a lot of tension at the top of the band, um, at the top of deadlift. We're still looking for those neutral shoulders pulled back, lifting the chest up and pushing the shoulder blades back into the pockets down behind us. What you'll see is also, I've maintained that straight arm from my shoulder, my elbow and my wrist. My feet are flat and my knees are pretty much back over my ankles or the midfoot. I myself have quite tight hamstrings. I find it quite difficult to touch my toes, but I don't find a deadlift any issues because my knees aren't completely locked out. You never want to lock your knees out in a deadlift completely. Depending on your flexibility levels, you can either change your knee position to be further back or further forward. The main thing and the priority when deadlifting is always gonna be your lower back. This is pretty much where my progression finishes for today, guys. It's a dumbbell deadlift. You can even involve the bands with the dumbbells to make a dumbbell band deadlift in another way. Um, if you are interested in that, drop me a comment below and I can always explain it in another video. But the dumbbells are pretty much where I want all of you guys to be when performing your home workouts. It's quite effective depending on the weight that you have available to you and it will very nicely cross over into a deadlift that you can perform with a barbell once you're back in the gym. With this one, again, just keep in mind that your first movement is gonna be the way down. Treat it like a rep. Set your shoulders, come back. Depending on how low the dumbbells are to the floor, your lower back might round a little bit, but just try and lift that in a nice neutral spine position. Hands stay in the front, knuckles in front. Hinge at the hip and then stand up and squeeze your bum on the way through. One of the biggest points to remember with a deadlift is that it is a glute exercise. You're squeezing your bum on the way up and that's really what's driving you. Okay, let me break this down for you for the last time, guys. Dumbbell deadlift, this is the good one that we've been progressing onto from the body weight and from the band. With this exercise specifically, I wanna to talk to you about driving with your glutes, squeezing your bum on the way up. Let me just wheel this back so you can see. So, stop here. At the bottom of the deadlift, every point that we've covered in the first two movement patterns, they're all being ticked off the box here. Vertical shin, straight line from the shoulder to the wrist, neutral spine, your feet are flat, tension in the hamstrings, this is all good. With the dumbbells, as the weight gets heavier, you wanna get, you're going to want to start driving from your glutes, all right? And that means squeezing your bum as you drive up or as you stand up, okay? So let's just bring this up for a little bit. If we stop right here, this is gonna be the point where it's either gonna be back dominant or glute dominant. And you, well, you definitely don't want it going into your lower back, okay? A common mistake people make is trying to lift with their chest. And as they lift with their chest, this part of the lower back can arch and you can start to get a little bit of a concave back. So you're lifting too much with your chest and it starts to hurt right there where you get that lower back pain. That's very, very common for a lot of us out there. If you just bring those shoulders down and keep your core tight, you wanna hold that breath in your belly. 
then drive up by pushing your hips forward, you'll start to get a little bit more of a different feeling throughout the movement. This should be a feeling more in your hamstrings and more in your glutes, and not in your lower back. Stand up all the way to the top, stop right there. That one is fantastic, okay? You've got a full neutral spine at the top and throughout the movement. You're locking out very well. You're keeping the distance from your shoulders to your arms, tucking the shoulder blades into the back pocket, um, and you're locking out really, really nice, okay? So that is ultimately what we want those reps to be looking at. If you do have that pain shooting into your lower back, it's likely that you're lifting your chest or you're focusing too much on bringing the weight up with your shoulders and your arms and your chest and not keeping your core tight and just driving your hips through, okay? What we ultimately want to be doing down here is thinking about squeezing your bum, bringing it through to the start, and your body will naturally assume the standing position at the top. You don't need, and there's no need to think about lifting your chest too much, and then you've got this horrible curve in your back that makes it very uncomfortable, and normally what turns a lot of people away from this movement, okay? That's it. Oh, thanks for listening by the way guys. If you have any more questions, please comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.